I think that the fool for Christ shows us the limit of our system, shows us the limit of our hierarchy. You know, for those in a talk that I gave called uh, Pentecost with the Zombie Apocalypse, I talk about how um, we, we have to be careful when we understand hierarchy. We have to understand its limits and understand that that the hierarchy is for us, right? It is for humans, but that there's always room for uh, surprise. And the fool for Christ appears as this <clears throat> accept, exception, really, as this exception, as something which doesn't fit, as this strangeness, as this stranger, as this weirdness, uh, but in a manner which gives life to, you know, to people, um, and also in a manner which, you know, awakens some spiritual qualities in other people. And so the, the, so, so it's tricky though, because it's like, I always wonder, cause I never met a fool for Christ, but I always ask myself, like, how do I tell the difference between just a crazy person and a fool for Christ? And I don't, I don't have a total answer for that. I don't have a, I don't have an easy answer except maybe studying some of the stories. Often in the stories, there'll be some secret moment where people perceive in that person's life that in fact, they are hiding, you know, all their holiness in this kind of outward, outward kind of outlandish behavior, which attempts to show the limits of the, of the system. Now, one of the things that can help you maybe understand the difference between a fool for Christ and, a, and a, let's say a dangerous uh, fool or a dangerous exception is that the fool for Christ will never have a revolutionary uh, discourse, whereas some fools for Christ in parentheses will use their folly or use their their exceptionalism to question the authority of the church or to question the normal hierarchy. Whereas the fool for Christ, uh, like an image, Saint Francis of Assisi is a perfect image where Saint Francis, you know, went around naked you know, did all kinds of insane looking, he would, you know, with the story about the Franciscans, they would spin on their, spin on themselves and then stop and then just walk in that direction, you know, until God showed them something that, that they needed to do. So it's like that kind of weird behavior. Uh, but they always did it in a manner which did not, St. Francis never tried to take authority over the people there. He never tried to, to, to take spiritual authority over others. And so maybe that is, a cue to to uh, distinguishing a uh, a holy fool or a fool for Christ um, compared to the uh, the more subversive kind. Do you think that there's hope we will have more saint fools who will help to turn this crazy world uh, uh, upside down or right side up? Um, I think so. I do think that we're already seeing it happen, and I think it's it's going to happen more and more as the world becomes more and more mad then then the fools will be the ones that will kind of show us a way out so we need to pay attention we need to be careful because some of the fools are just fools we we, we, we have to be really careful because in a world of folly it's, it is sometimes hard to discern the, the the holy fool but the holy fool is flipping that's what he's doing he is flipping things he's working to the salvation of, of others uh, if you read the book Laris, it's really worth reading because you really do see this holy fool and you see that no, you don't want that life. Like you don't want uh, to to be the to accept being the butt of the joke because that's the thing. You could the, one of the ways maybe you can see the difference between a fool that is useful and a fool that is not useful is the fool that is that is not useful usually is just making fun of other people, and the fool that is useful usually that turns then back on himself. Right, and so the, the proper clown will will tricking be tricking people, but on the end he slips on his own banana peel and he falls. Like that's the proper clown. That's the clown that actually the the, the, the full turn clown. Okay, um, a lot of the foolishness that we see around in the world right now is actually is actually uh, extremely it's kind of like this angry foolishness that is wants to accuse the <coughs> wants to accuse the system, you know of being the oppressor, of doing all that, and all of this, and all this, but the, the real fool, or the, the, the full, full fool doesn't, doesn't do that, doesn't accuse the system. He makes fun of it, and then it turns, and he realizes that, well, he's actually, he can't avoid being part of it, so it turns back on him. There are several uh, cultures, like in um, Native American cultures, they have these, these fools as, 
part of their actual rituals. Like the, the fool is actually a, uh, has a function in in the especially in the desert uh, Native Americans in, in the U.S. The, the desert, the Plain Indians, they had a, it's called the Hekoya, which was this 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 character that would in rituals would come to the rituals and would would uh, pass gas and would like start saying stupid things like just to distract. He was acting in a way to show the limit of the of the ritual to say this ritual isn't all encompassing. Um, and so you have that, but they never. They're not there to destroy the ritual. They're just there to show the limit of the ritual, right? To show that it doesn't encompass everything. Uh, do you have any advice to help us recognize the holy fool versus the regular fool? I think that's that's the that's a big one in terms of of accepting to be uh, to be humbled is one of the biggest aspects that you'll see in a in a holy fool. And um, and like I said, it, it usually ends up turning things. It's hard because you, you, it's so popular right now to criticize authority. Like everybody does it. It's just, it just it's become normal. It's become, it's become normal to criticize authority. And so the holy fool would probably end up doing something different. It would criticize criticizing authority or something like that. And then it would turn. So I don't know. When I see it, I, like, when I see one, I can point you to him. Like I think, I think Kanye West is playing a role that's coming close to it. Like the way that he's... He's, he's flipping everything, and the way he's doing it is very it's kind of funny also because he's – just the idea of naming his album Jesus is King and knowing what it's going to do and forcing people to say it in a – it's kind of humorous, but it, it, uh, it does what it does.